What would you do if I told you that we discovered a high-performance loudspeaker company from Norway, a brand that you probably never heard of? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasalo with Audioholics, and we have some exciting news. We have a really awesome discovery we want to bring to you. We, as you guys know, we do a lot of loudspeaker reviews. James Larson's our primary loudspeaker reviewer on Audioholics. And when he gets excited about a speaker, then I get excited. I want to talk to you about it. You probably never heard of this brand. They're called a Rendell Sound. They're from Norway. This is a brand you should be taking a closer look at. So what I want to do is I want to go over the review that James wrote on the editorial site. I want to actually go over this with you, inspire you guys to read it because it's well worth your time. So I'm going to share the screen and we're going to talk about what makes these speakers so impressive. And here we are. All right. So on the editorial side, on the homepage in our featured area, you could pop up this review. It's called Rendell Sound 1723 Monitor THX Loudspeaker Review, posted July 5th by James Larson. As you can see, he gave it a five out of five for performance and a five out of five for value. That's rare. We don't often give speakers that high mark or any products for that matter. So the pros that he found is wide dynamic range. And with that THX certification, that's a really great pro right there because it's, these speakers are a larger bookshelf speaker and they have a lot of dynamic range because they're THX certified. They hit that reference 105 dB at 12 feet in a 3000 cubic foot room. So that's impressive because if you scale that back to a meter, that's about 117 dB peaks. Very loud, very impressive for a speaker of this footprint at this price. Now, when James was initially got these speakers in for review, when he looked at just the build quality alone, the, the craftsmanship, he assumed they were $2,500 each. That's not the case. These are actually $2,500 for the pair, and that includes shipping. And they're even $100 less if you get them in satin black or satin white as opposed to the gloss black or gloss white. So this is extremely high value for what you're going to get. And I want to talk to you about that more closely. So as we said, wide dynamic range. They're very neutral, accurate sound. And you'll see that in the measurements. Nicely controlled directivity. We'll talk about what that means. Unexpectedly good build quality for the cost. High quality gloss finish. As I said, uh, I showed you the picture before. and most speakers only give you a three or maybe a five-year warranty. Most companies, these guys, a Rendell Sound, give you a 10-year warranty. That speaks volumes for their craftsmanship and, and their uh, confidence in their product. That's awesome. The only con he put in this review is the fact that they're a, quite a large bookshelf speaker. They're kind of they're kind of heavy for putting on stands, so you've got to make sure you have good stands. They're pretty big. They're, you know, they're 25 inches tall, almost 11 inches wide, and almost 16 inches deep. They weigh almost 60 pounds, 58 and a half pounds. That's impressive. And these are power. These, these speakers can handle lots of power because they are THX rated. They're built really rugged. They can handle 400 watt amplifiers easily, 4 ohm rated, high sensitivity, 89 dB. So let's get into this in the frequency response, of course, in the sealed mode, if you want to operate this as a THX speaker, the 3 dB point is 58 hertz with about a 24 dB per octave slope below that uh, when you use the high pass of your, of your processor. And then um, if you run them as ported, or if you want to run them in two, range, two channel full range, they have usable base minus 3 dB point of 34 hertz. That's unheard of usually for bookshelf speakers. That's impressive base response for a tower. So let's get into it. So you can see they're packed really well. James likes to kind of show that when he takes things apart here. And that's great because it's an international company. You want to make sure these things don't arrive damaged. Cool thing is they have magnetic metal grills. And these use very strong neodymium magnets. So it was a challenge to even get these grills off the front of the speaker. And you'd be surprised. I've seen $16,000 speakers with flimsy plastic grills that wobble when you take them off. And the neodymium magnets, they use the weakest neodymium magnets. The speaker grill slides right off with very little effort. That's not the case here. These are very rigid. They're very thin. They don't cause any major diffraction issues. And they stay on the speaker, more importantly. So... If you don't want anybody touching your speakers, you put those grills on. 
And you can see another picture here. These just look really beautiful. Um, I love the gloss finish on them. It's really high class. The waveguide here is, you would think it would be plastic, but it's not. It's actually aluminum. So it's really just nicely built, nicely crafted speaker. And, you know, this waveguide has a real purpose to it. It actually controls the directivity of the speaker. It controls the dispersion. Um, it, it actually helps match better with the woofers, and it, and it controls the uh, lateral dispersion as well. The advantage of doing something like this is when you have um, controlled directivity, you could do what's called trade time intensity trading. And what that allows you to do is if you tow the speakers in, James Larson recommends about a 15 degree tow in, it allows you to widen the sweet spot. See, if you get a speaker that just has wide dispersion at high frequencies, as you get to a sidewall or closer to a right speaker or closer to a left speaker, you tend to hear that speaker more because the reflections are more dominant. With time intensity trading, when you have a speaker that has controlled directivity, it actually gets quieter off access. So when you tow them in, you can move to the left or move to the right, and you could preserve that stereo image or that phantom center for a wider sweet spot. So you're not just sitting at one seat to get that good image and quality. You have a wider area with a speaker like this. So that's a really cool feature of these speakers, part of the design. Um, they use good quality crossovers. You can see the capacitors here. They have 250 volt parts. So you know these things can handle a lot of power. They have polypro cap uh, capacitors here, air core inductors, just cool stuff. And you can see inside here, um, there's a lot of uh, polyfill in here. The speaker wires are twisted pair. That's awesome for you know mutual uh, to eliminate crosstalk coupling. Um, if you notice, the inside of the cabinet is actually finished. So it doesn't just look like the HDF you see. You don't just see raw wood. They actually finished it. They took the time to finish it. I think that's a nice touch. They're built extremely well. The side panels are three and a quarter inch HDF and the front panel is full one inch thick. You don't typically see one inch thick front uh, baffles on speakers, um, especially bookshelf speakers that don't cost it a lot more than these. So that's impressive build quality right there. Um, there's the speakers rear ported. Sorry about this pop-up stuff. Uh, the speakers rear ported. It has two inch seven, uh, two inch diameter ports that are seven inches deep. It has these nice Rydium, uh, speaker connectors and you could do, um, by amping or you could do by wiring on them. That's really a, an awesome feature. And as we said before, it's THX ultra certified. And I know a lot of people don't really place a lot of value in THX, but you know what? It's good housekeeping. You know that this speaker is going to hit reference level in a 3000 cubic foot room. It'll hit 105 dB peaks with low distortion at 12 feet. And as I said before, if you translate that number down to one meter where you get most of the max ratings of speakers, when it come, if a company even specifies that, that's 117 dB. That's that's hella loud, especially for a speaker of this size. You and that's just for one speaker plane. So imagine when you have you know seven or ten or eleven, whatever. So these things are just they're rugged. They handle a lot of power. They're built well. They include shipping with the price, which is awesome. And um, I'm not going to read you all of James's uh, review here, but suffice it to say he said the 1723 monitors produced a tower like range and authority so in other words these speakers play like a tower they have the base extension of a tower but they're not a tower so they're smaller that's cool like to hear that um he found that these are stand mount speakers that can sound like tower speakers i think that's a really important thing to reiterate that so just because they're small or reasonably small for our bookshelf don't judge them by their size. These things are these things mean serious business. By having two eight-inch bass drivers, it increases the sensitivity of the speaker and it increases the efficiency and, and it allows it to have more dynamic range. So I like the fact that it's an MTM because it controls the vertical dispersion and then it has the waveguide to control the lateral dispersion as well. So you, you get the time intensity trading like we talked about and you don't need a whole lot of treatments on your ceiling and floor when you have a speaker that actually does some of the control by having an MTM. I also like having an MTM because you have double the uh, surface area for your mid-range frequencies. A lot of companies, they put a four inch driver in and they call it a day and they think they have a dynamic speaker. It's really hard to get a lot of dynamic range out of the mid-range when you only have a four inch driver. These have two eights, big advantage there. 
So I want to go over some of the measurements with you briefly. And you guys can read this report. I encourage you to read this report. James puts a lot of effort into these reviews. And he basically goes outside, puts them on, um, on a stand seven and a half feet tall, and he rotates the speaker and he measures it outdoors to get very accurate measurements. And you can see here how flat and even the response is and how as you go, um, the early reflections here are just very linear to what the main on-axis response is. And you can see here the total sound power and the first reflection directivity index. You want this to be flat. This is reasonably flat, very good. A little bit beaming at the very high frequencies, but not a big deal. And there's just more measurements here. He gets all geeked out showing you in 3D just how flat and even this is and how uniform the response is. Good stuff, good stuff. And you can see here when you go 15 degrees off axis versus 30 degrees off axis, the response is very similar. It's just a little lower down in volume and that's good. The time intensity training thing we were talking about. And I wanna show you uh, the base response here. Again, for a bookshelf speaker, if you run these ported, these things have usable base. If you, see, if you see the purple trace, 35 hertz, they're only about 5 dB down. That's pretty awesome. I mean, these things, you don't need a subwoofer for most music material with these. But if, of course, we always recommend subwoofers because we are audioholics. So if you want to run this as a THX monitor, here's the response that you get when you plug the ports. Excellent. Just, you know, textbook kind of stuff. And here's the interesting thing. This is a four ohm rated speaker. So usually um, if a company is compliant with the IEC standard and they rate a speaker at eight ohms or they rate a speaker at four ohms, it has to maintain 80% of that nominal value. So in this case for four ohms, it can't go below 3.2 ohms. This speaker doesn't go below five ohms. I mean, they really could have rated this a six ohm speaker if they wanted to be more conservative. So this is an easy speaker for any amplifier to drive. You could drive it with a mid-level receiver. Of course, we recommend if you do better amplification, you're gonna get better results, especially because these can handle the power. So I honestly, I would recommend, you know, a 200 watt per channel amplifier with these speakers. Maybe if you get a receiver and you get three of these speakers, get a three channel amp, give these guys power, they deserve it. And you can see they're tuned right at around 30 Hertz here from the saddle point. So yeah, it's just really good. I just, I love these, I love this little logo here. It looks awesome. Speakers look great. They come in white or black. And the, his biggest complaint was because they're heavy at 60 pounds, it's hard to find a good stand. Uh, a Rendell Sound actually makes a box stand. So you put the speaker on top of this and it looks like a tower. And they actually worked out a deal for Audioholics readers. If you buy their stands, they give you 50% off if you type Audioholics in the coupon code. So if you are considering that, I recommend it. The other option too, is if, if you spend a little bit more money, you could actually get the tower version of the speaker and not even have to worry about the stand. It'll have the same great performance, but with a couple of more bass drivers. So if you're doing a two channel rig, I would definitely get the tower version of the speaker and be done with it. That's how good this is. As, as James says, the Arendel Sound 1723 monitors offer superb sound quality. And he's not one to give such great compliments easily. And again, they look, they just look gorgeous. I'm sorry, I'm sold on these speakers. The cool thing again, is they have a, a 60 day home trial period, 10 year warranty. And I wanted to go over some notes with you in case I forgot anything. I just put together this little cheat sheet. So again, these are the Arendel 1723 monitors. They have dual eight inch uh, mid bass woofers, a 1.1 inch soft dome tweeter or the waveguide. They're made out of HDF, HDF, high density fiberboard. Most speakers are made with MDF. I mean, it's just a nice thing that they're using HDF. It doesn't necessarily mean it's better, but it is just, it's good quality stuff. It maintains its shape better. And over time, it's more durable. A one inch front thick baffle, three quarter inch side panels, high grade drivers, large metal back plates on the woofers, rhodium plated binding posts, aluminum waveguide. It's not plastic. And it, you know, that's a, just another thing about the, the craftsmanship of the product. High grade quality crossover components, heavy duty metal grill. It's not that cheap flimsy crap that you get with a lot of speakers these days with very powerful neodymium magnet adhesion. Painted interior that's packed with polyfill and is well lined with soft butyl damping layer. Very important to control inter internal cabinet uh, reflections and resonances. The sound quality to sum it up is excellent on and off axis response. Crazy good extension from a stand mount speaker, usable bass down in the 30 hertz, 
Excellent dynamics, THX certified, 105 dB per spec at 12 feet, 3,000 cubic foot room. I said, again, 117 dB at one meter. That's loud. Dispersion behavior makes the 1723 is a great candidate for time intensity trading positioning. Again, that's to widen your sweet spot. So more people in the front of your room when they're sitting down, they get to have that phantom center and you get better imaging of the speakers. The 1723 monitors have very good directivity control and will be very predictably equalized for those who want to change the tonal balance of the sound. So that's an important point. So when you have a speaker that's well behaved like this, if you want to EQ it, you can actually get predictable results EQing it as opposed to a speaker that just has really bad off-axis off -axis response. You're not going to really know how beneficial the EQ is there. So that's great to know. High sensitivity. I don't know why James has to do this, but come on, 89.9, let's just call it 90 dB at 2.83 volts. I mean, come on, a tenth of a dB. These guys rate the, the sensitivity the correct way. They don't inflate it by doing an in-room measurement that some of the competitors do. This is a this is a very efficient speaker. As I said, it dips down only five ohms. So any any decent receiver, you go and spend seven, eight hundred dollars, a thousand dollars on a receiver, these speakers will work fine with it. Of course, we do recommend bigger amplification if you could afford it. The perfect application is a tower speaker sound when stand mounted, speakers are needed, and dedicated home theater loudspeakers. So they serve both purposes. They have a 60 day trial period, which is a very generous trial period. For, if for some reason you don't like the speakers, you could ship them back. And they have a 10 year warranty, which again is pretty unheard of with, in terms of loudspeakers. And just to show you some perks of the site, let's see if I can um, open this hyperlink. They have a knitting club. I guess it's for uh, former Arendelle employees. I think Jan, the owner, um, his mother, I think, was doing some knitting for them. So that's really cool. It's just a, it's a family run company. I love that. Um, they have a lot, of, you know, they have a heritage. I wanted to show you um, some of their other speakers here as well. So as I was saying before, if you're going to get the stands, you might also want to consider just getting the towers. So they have two more eight inch drivers. These look gorgeous. A little bit more money, but man, these things will slam. And then you could use the the uh, the speaker reviewed the 1723 as the center channel. And this actually has for an MTM, it actually has pretty good dispersion horizontally. As long as you're sitting within plus or minus 20 degrees off of on axis, you'll have good coverage for all your seats. Yeah, so that's that's what I wanted to show you guys. And I just love um, I love these towers when they have these outriggers and they're kind of angled a little bit forward. It just looks cool. They also have subwoofers. And we are going to be looking at some more of those products as well. So let me come back to earth here. So there you have it, guys. I'm really impressed with this company. We're going to be doing a lot more coverage of them. You're going to be seeing, um, I guess, next will be a subwoofer review. And then maybe we'll check out some towers in the near future. I want to hear from you guys. Are there any Arendelle Sound owners? Please give us some comments down below. Let us know what you think about these speakers or if you're considering buying them. I'll put some links down below if you guys want to go and buy them off of the website. You're welcome to do that. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. You get unique content there. You get access to us if you want to ask questions or suggest video topics. And of course, you help us to keep the content coming here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification so you know when the next video drops. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.